Everyone likes a good villain. They elevate our heroes and push them to do great things. But for every Willem Dafoe Green Goblin, we get a Topher Grace Venom. A month ago, I made a video discussing the best villains in Spider-Man games. So today, I'm gonna flip that script and talk about the worst adapted Spider-Man villains in video games. I'm going to look how each character is portrayed in game via story, gameplay, and design. These are just my opinions, and if I mention something you don't agree with, let's square up in the comments. But if you enjoy this video at any point, please hit that like and subscribe button. The goal is to hit 10K this year, and we're almost to five. So please show your support. Now, without further ado, let's dive on in. Off the top of my head, I was gonna give it to the Tasm 2 game Green Goblin. But then I realized it's just my biases from the Dane DeHaan movie adaptation. The game version, however, is honestly not that bad. His motivation are insanely legit, he's snarky, and his boss battle has a lot going for it. The real worst Green Goblin is none other than the Green Goblin from Tasm 2, the mobile game. Look, I'm not expecting a AAA quality out of a mobile game released in 2014, but whoever designed this goblin definitely didn't watch the movie, or played the game, or even knew what a green goblin was. This goblin is literally just a business bro. I kid you not, this is his first line. Who are you? A representative of the company you've taken such a keen interest in harassing. This POS is more concerned about his bottom line than trying to make Spider-Man's life hell. How can you support a villain like that? Worse, he's even got a douchey Wall Street comb over. At least Tasm 2, the movie, the game, design made Green Goblin look sickly, which followed the context of Harry being diagnosed with a terminal illness. This version looks like he'd slip something into a girl's drink at a bar. Cosby can save his pills, because this boss battle is a snooze fest anyways. This goober telegraphs his attack so hard it makes a Pacific Rim Jaeger look spry. Then sits there idly waiting to get his ass kicked. God, I hate this guy, and I found out about him like four days ago. Alfred Molina gave the best dock off performance of all time with his sick duster, suave demeanor, and underestimated strength. This version was so beloved that countless Spidey games try to replicate Molina's adaptation. And honestly, a lot of them hit the nail on the head. Except for Spider-Man 2 on the PC, which didn't hit the nail, but instead smashed a thumb. I understand that Spider-Man 2 on PC was baby mode, but I asked my local professional baby what they thought about PC Doc Ock, and they said, That shit is a, a two-pack of ass. Hello, Peter. All the drip, all the swagger, all the intensity of Doc Ock gets stripped away with this PC version. He goes from someone who is cool to someone who thinks they're cool. I think it mainly comes down to the bad animations, which pretty much the whole game suffers through, but Doc Ock especially gets the short end of the stick. Spider-Man 2, Doc Ock has arms that are supposed to have like minds of their own, but in this game they just kind of look like slinkies attached to his back. All his dialogue sound like they're recorded from the movie using a Motorola Razor, and this God awful boss fight. Like where is he getting all these cars? The train fight in the movie demonstrates how much Peter does to protect the citizens of New York, ultimately letting the villain go to save them, while in return, the citizens save him. In the PC version, I'm pretty sure Doc Ock's just hurling people left and right in their cars, and Peter doesn't really care. This is character assassination at its finest, and this version of Doc Ock definitely belongs in the bottom of the river. I didn't have to think for a second which Venom is the worst. It's Spider-Man 3 Venom. It's always Spider-Man 3 Venom. Sure, his motivations are more aligned with classic Venom more than, say, like Insomniac's version, but I can't f***ing stand this Venom. His suit is worse than the movies, his face looks like a deformed fish, and why in God's green earth does he f***ing twirl? Name one time Venom twirls like a marionette. Seriously, this Venom moves around like he's on a f***ing Broadway production of Newsies. Topher Grace brings the same level of pompous ass voice delivery he does in the movie, so it's easy to hate on him as a villain, but all the other aspect is somehow worse than the movie counterpart. And the boss fight itself is your typical affair. Make a loud noise to stun the symbiote, then Millie whop him into a quick time event. Nothing crazy, but the level design for this boss fight is just abysmal. And again, why does he f***ing twirl? I'm about to say the most controversial opinion in this video. Electro from Shattered Dimension sucks. Now I'm not talking about electricity, I'm talking about dick. I don't know why they kept trying to push the Dr. Manhattan being made out of pure energy design in the early 2000s. 
Even the game mocks its own design. Dude, pants! No one wants to see your junk. Though it's not my favorite level in Shattered Dimension, it's a fine opening level for Ultimate Spider-Man. The part that ruins it for me though is the boss battle with the giant powered up Electro, where he pretty much just kills himself by destroying a dam. Like seriously, almost every attack he does in this battle damages himself. Also, how does water defeat him? Shouldn't it amplify his powers or something? If I'm battling my toaster, should I take it to the bath to defeat it? If you're a scientist or watch enough Bill Nye the Science Guy, please explain this to me in the comments. Remember in Spectacular Spider-Man when Kraven went full furry? And it was deemed by fans to be the worst part of a pretty awesome show? Well, in Spider-Man 3, the movie game, Kraven is a lot worse than that. I don't know how you mess up Kraven's design. He's a buff Russian man eternally wearing safari clothes. Throw in a beard, mustache, and slick back hair, and you got yourself a cool character. They got the safari clothes down, but damn, what's with this beard style? And the ponytail? This man looks more like Joe Exotic than Kraven the Hunter. However, the worst part of this Kraven is the lackluster boss battle. It's honestly had the potential to be really cool, with Kraven taking on different animal forms that change up his combat style. The bear potion makes him stronger, panther potion makes him fast, etc. The underwhelming part is none of these unique modes take advantage of the mechanics they are given. You still fight him the same way regardless of what form he's in. The one that grinds my gear the most is when Kraven gets the ability of flight in eagle form, then proceeds to be on the ground for half the time so you can just punch him. Like. Like what a missed opportunity to change the battle area and like force the player to do more aerial combat. But no, you just dodge attacks until he's on the ground and hit him like you usually do. A big missed opportunity to capitalize on an interesting mechanic. In my best villains video, I learned how big the Shocker fan base was and how much more complex the character of Herman Schultz is. But the Shocker squad has to admit that Ultimate Spider-Man did your boy dirty. In most media, Shocker tends to be a henchman or a lesser villain of sorts, but Ultimate Spider-Man beats and belittles the guy to a point that Spidey handicapping himself still results in the second easiest boss battle in any Spider-Man game. I'll go easy on you this time, Herman. I'll only use my webs. Ah, I'll kill ya! I'll kill ya! They also killed any sauce man had with this fit. I'm not the biggest fan of the yellow quilt look, but this drastic design change made Herman look like a bad Captain Cold cosplay. A Shocker original, one of one, am I right? When you think of Carnage, what do you imagine? A blood red symbiote suit? A pension for chaos? This laugh? Yeah. How about being in high school? No. Well, tell that to the guys who made Marvel's Avengers Academy, a mobile game where a multitude of Marvel heroes and villains hang out, grow stronger as people, and develop relationships. A perfect place for a serial killer. They neutered Cletus Cassidy as hard as Tasm 2 mobile game Green Goblin. The devs have no clue what Carnage's relationship with the other Spider-Man characters are. Like, why is he chummy with Venom? This game's whole gimmick is to have a bunch of Marvel characters attending high school, but Carnage just feels out of place. He just he, it doesn't make any sense. The Vulture is an easy villain to hate on, akin to a World War II carrier pigeon. But at least his adaptations remain consistent throughout media. Except for one glaring exception. Spider-Man The Sinister Six, a point-and-click adventure game. It's fair to say that any villain in this game could be deemed the worst adaptation, but the Vulture truly stands out, primarily because he looks like this. Seeing Adrian Toomes with hair just feels wrong. This design mirrors the 90s animated cartoon counterpart, but in the Spidey show, there's a plot reason why Vulture looks young. In this game, it's just the way he is, and once again, it, it just feels wrong. They even gave him a worse haircut, which I didn't think was possible. And yet, the most outrageous aspect of this version of Vulture is the gameplay, which doesn't represent him at all. Bear with me, this is, this is how his fight goes. He shoots Spidey with a gun. That's it. Not that he shoots him from the air or anything. Nope, he just stands in an alleyway and shoots Spidey with a gun. Riveting. This whole game is a mess in its own right, but Vulture just ticks me off the most. It was as tough to find the worst Rhino as it was to find the best Rhino. The dude is just too simple of a character. 
so it's hard to mess him up in games. He's always a lesser boss in games, so he tends to not get any complex characterization like he does in the comics. But if you were to twist my arm into picking one, I gotta go with Spider-Man 2 PC. Man gets relegated to a tutorial boss with run animations that make Ezra Miller's Flash look like Hussein Bolt. His lips be smacking though. Damn. Why does my man sound like he's busted? I know things get lonely in the raft, but he's a little too excited to see Spider-Man. Most media treats Sandy Cheeks as just a big sand monster, but he lends himself to be more interesting in games like Shattered Dimension. Ultimate Alliance 3 makes Flint Marco squarer than SpongeBob, both in design and gameplay. This boss battle is equivalent to actually punching sand, as it's so simple. Shoot Sandman with a black goo until he gets stoned, and then just button mash until victory. Real exciting, I know. Especially when you realize the heroes are fighting on top of sand the whole time. Why even have it part of the set design if you're not gonna use it for something interesting? So stupid. It's not a great introduction to Ultraman Alliance 3. It almost made me stop playing the game from the get-go. Plus, Lego Marvel superheroes did the same fight and somehow made it more fun. Just saying. The Lizard is another character that's idiot proof. Give him the plot of not wanting to become the Lizard, then becoming the Lizard anyways, and pairing that with a nice Lizard design, and boom, you are golden. Okay, I've never heard of this game, but this design looks promising. A classic comic book Lizard design. Okay, he just starts attacking you with acid. I, I didn't know Lizard could do that. Oh god, is this whole game just quick time events? Why are we fighting the lizard at the lookout from Dragon Ball? Never mind, you can mess up the lizard. The uneducated will default to the Spider-Man 2 console version of Mysterio due to that silly boss battle in the convenience store. Us highbrow Spidey fans know the true worst Mysterio is Lego Marvel Super Heroes 2 Mysterio. I typically avoid putting Lego games on this list because they're supposed to be simple and clean fun. But anytime I see Mysterio in a game, I expect some wacky level designs, dramatic performances, and mind-bending twists. This version has none of that. Just some weird magical overlay. This has to be the most boring use of the Master Illusionist. His minifig's great though. Welcome to How to Make a Filler Boss 101. Take a character with a bold design. Strip him of useless bits like personality and backstory. Double down on a B-movie monster design. And boom, you got yourself a lackluster villain. You can barely call Tasm Scorpion a classic Spidey villain. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think they even mentioned who this Scorpion is in this game. The boss fight is all right as it forces you to be pretty light on your feet, but other fights in this game do it better. This Scorpion is a side note at best. In video games, Kingpin is another easy villain to get right. He's a rich guy with thick thighs and he won't lie. Okay, that last part might not be true. His worst adaptation is in Spider-Man Battle for New York. In the story though, he, they nail his character out of the park. He takes advantage of the law to prevent Spidey from doing anything to him, while simultaneously doing shady deals in the shadows. I'm making this fist the worst kingpin purely because his design in actual gameplay. Like jeez, it makes the Lego Big Fig feel like the Michelangelo. For being one of the most iconic criminal masterminds in fiction, this dude fights like he's the bone saw from Spider-Man 1. Dude has like two moves and one of them is just diving from the top rope. It's a little nitpicky being a game on the DS, but you can't disrespect Wilson Fist. And then there's the chameleon. Any chameleon. Well, there you have it. The worst adaptation of classic Spidey villains in video games. What do you think about this bad batch? Is it truly the worst or am I just picky? Comment below and let me know. I love making these list videos. I get to analyze some classic Spidey games as well as learn about some obscure ones. If you're a returning fan, thanks for bearing with me as I try out some new video ideas, but a lot more lists and video essays coming your way. If you're a new fan, thanks for sticking around to the end of this video and please check out my other Spider-Man videos. I'm so close to 5K, so please don't forget to like and subscribe. Until next time, fair winds and safe travel mates.